Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all my Infernity Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile for post Phantom Rage. With the release of Phantom Rage, we were given a pretty good amount of Infernity support, and a lot of you were requesting a deck update to the Infernity deck, which I gotta say, this deck is definitely one of those all-over-the-place decks that doesn't really run a whole lot of actual Infernity support for the consistency and actual uh, gameplay for the deck, and that's mostly also because this deck has still been, you know, hitting pretty hard by the ban list with both Infernity Infernity Launcher and Infernity Archfiend both being at one on the ban list still. If we ever see these cards come off the list, we might see some more power to the deck. Other uh, Xyz monsters like Lava Vol Chain definitely helped overpower this deck to a broken standard at one point. But with the release of the new support, we definitely have some different play styles for the deck, but still focusing on the no hand play style for setting up your graveyard and using all the other different generic support we have for that play style to uh, come forth. So let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So for the Infernity Monsters, we're running one Infernity Archfiend. Like I said, this card is at one on the ban list. When you uh, draw uh, this card, except during the damage step, if you uh, basically with this card have no other cards in your hand, you can reveal this card and special summon this card from your hand. And when this card is special summoned, you can add one Infernity card from your deck to your hand. You must have no cards in your hand to activate and resolve this effect. So with this card, you have just search power, easy special summon power as well with your Archfiend. So being able to rely on this card for that easy special summon, uh, drawing into uh, this card, adding any of your Infernity cards, which most of the time for the setup, you'll wanna go into your Infernity launcher. But once again, being at one one uh, definitely weakens this play, but still great when you can resolve uh, this setup for sure with all the other different support and special summoning we have, including the new Infernity Doom Archfiend, which definitely becomes a main uh, you know play point of the deck as well. I'm also running one Infernity Necromancer with this one. When this card is normal summon, it is changed to defense position. And while you have no cards in your hand, this card gains the following effect. Once per turn, you can special summon one Infernity monster from your graveyard, except for Infernity Necromancer. So being able to special summon back resources that we've already set up in the graveyard makes setting up our graveyard plays very, very important. So we want plenty of cards that can either discard cards to the graveyard or set up just more and more cards in the graveyard. So Danger Engines, uh, Tour Guide from the Underworld, World, plenty of cards to set up in the graveyard for that play uh, definitely do come in handy and the fact that this card is a fiend as well means that you can summon it out onto the field with tour guide and then just have other extra deck plays to go with those cards also and then one of the cards I was debating on how many I wanted to run, I decided to stick to two Infernity Mirage. This card was just recently reprinted in the Maximum Gold set, so that much easier to get a hold of for people wanting to build this deck. It cannot be Special Summoned from the Graveyard. If you have no cards in your hand, you can tribute this card, then target two Infernity Monsters in your Graveyard and Special Summon them. So with this card and all the other uh, cards for Special Summoning options, being able to set up uh, Necromancer and Archfiend on the field, just for more Special Summon plays off of both of these cards, make um, you know mirage that much of a vital part in the deck being able to set up both of these for more and more plays to go into and the fact that it is a level one monster means you also have a one for one target with this card it cannot be special summoned from the graveyard but you can still special summon it from the deck onto the field to use for some of the new infernity monsters i'm running two infernity uh wildcat you can special summon this card from your hand by sending one other infernity monster in your hand to the graveyard you can only special summon infernity wildcat once per turn this way and while you have no other cards in your hand you you can banish one Infernity monster from your graveyard to increase or decrease the level of this card by one until the end of this turn. And you can only use each uh, this effect of Wildcat once per turn. So this is definitely a situation card. I even debated if I wanted to run two of this card in the deck and just keep it at one because this card will definitely eat away at your resources for your play. And there are some vital Infernity monsters that you don't want to banish. So remember that also with this card. Most of the time I just like to special summon it out basically for the fact that it is a tuner monster that you can rely on and also just just being a card that can send an Infernity Monster from your hand to the graveyard, special summoning this card, and setting up other ones in your graveyard to be special summoned back onto the field also. And I also run for some of the one ofs for the Infernity Monster, some of the um, lesser, but still uh, pretty useful in the deck. I run one Infernity Conjurer. While you have no cards in your hand, monsters your opponent control lose 800 attack. And while you have no cards in your hand and this card's in your graveyard, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use this effect of Infernity Conjurer once per turn. So if it banishes, you can obviously get around this by Xyz summoning with this card. We have plenty of rank three options in the deck to go for, but also just the 800 attack lower against your opponent can be useful when going up against them 
them. I mostly like it for when you set this car up in the graveyard. It is an easy special summon back on the field. Being a level three along with your Infinity Wildcat, you can go for your level six play for your new Synchro Monster as well with both of these cards. I also run one Infinity Patriarch. With this, if this is the only card in your hand, you can special summon this card from your hand. And you can only special summon this card once per turn this way. And while you have no cards in your hand, if an Infinity Monsters you control would be destroyed by battle or car effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. So more of a protection card, but just another easy card to special summon out onto the field to use for its resources as well. Like I said, if we had a uh, Lava Vault Chain, this would be a perfect setup with Infinity Archfiend for the rank 4 play. But we still have the option of Link Summoning with this card, and also uh, different Synchro Summoning depending on what other tuners and other non-effect monsters we have on the field. And lastly, for the Infernity Monsters, I run one Infernity Avenger. With this card, when a monster you control, except Infernity Avenger, is destroyed by battle and uh, your opponent's monster and sent to the graveyard, we have no cards in your hand. You can special summon this card from your graveyard uh, to the field. Uh, and then this level of this card is equal to the level of the destroyed monster. So you're able to adjust the level, but also just give you easy special summon since you can easily special summon and set up your Infernity Monsters in the graveyard to use back onto the field also. But you really only need the one since you have to control another infinity aside from infinity avenger so having multiples of this doesn't really help with those plays and then we need more uh, resources to summon out onto the field. So back at three on the Banlish, uh, running three tour guide from the Underworld. Once again, just easy special summoning onto the field. You can't use the cards for um, the Synchro, but you can go for Xyz, Link, you name it. And also being able to set up cards because this card special summons a Fiend Monster. Cards like Infernity Necromancer into the graveyard also makes it all the better or just gives you an Infernity Monster on the field to use as well. For more of our Synchro plays, I run three Psychic Wielder, with this one being one of the other tuners we can rely on, because with our Infernity Doom Archfiend, it just needs one tuner and one non-tuner. It's not limited to your Infernity Monsters to summon out. If you control level three monster, which we run plenty of in this deck as well, uh, you can special summon this card from your hand in defense position. Then you can only special summon this card once per turn this way. And if this card is sent from to the graveyard as Synchro material, you can target one monster on the field with less attack than the Synchro Summon monster and destroy it. You can only use this effect of Wielder once per turn. But that's great because you have the setup for a pretty powerful Synchro monster being able to destroy other cards on the field, make it that much better for a setup with this Tuner monster. For some of the other one-ofs for the monsters, I am running one Danger Jackalope and one Danger Tsuchinoko. More discard power as well, so it gets rid of cards in your hands, so you can have a free hand to use for your Infernity monsters. I also run one Edgem Sabers, another target for Tour Guide, and more of the hand setup on the top of your deck. And being able to set up your Infernity Archfiend for the draw makes this card all the better as well, because you can draw and reveal and special summon and use Infernity Archfiend in the way uh, for its draw. Uh, draw power as well. I also run one Dark Greffer. This I don't special summon uh, with its own effect because we don't run any high level monsters. If you wanted to try out Danger Bigfoot or some of the other higher levels to give this card discard power for the special summon, you can try that out. But mostly just have it in here for the discard of a Dark Attribute monster, which we run plenty of, and then being able to send an additional one from our deck to the graveyard. Same goes for Armageddon Knight, running both of these warrior targets. Also allows for me to run reinforcements of the army for search targets for both of these cards also. And that is it for the monsters. Like I said, with the Infernity deck, it definitely feels like an all over the place deck, but the play style is basically just that setup, having no cards in your hand, using the Infernity monsters in your graveyard for countless special summons and extra deck plays as well. For these spells, we're starting off with not so much some of the uh, Infernity support, but more of, you know, some generic support we received. And I'm running three Void Apocalypse. You can discard one card to send one Fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard. Then you can send this face-up card from your spell and trap card zone to the graveyard to send Infernoid monsters, but with this, you're mostly using it for the discard uh, one card and send one Fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard. More setup, that's what it's doing with this card. Being able to use and send any Fiend monster gives you setup for plenty of different monsters we run in the deck. I also run two Allure of Darkness, just more additional draw power with this card. If you have multiples of some specific cards in your hand and you just need to draw into some maybe more useful cards for your plays, this, these definitely do help for that situation. 
Uh, for some of the one ofs uh, with these spells, I run one Infernity Launcher, another card that's at one on the ban list. Once per turn, you can send one Infernity Monster from your hand to the graveyard, and you can send this card to the graveyard to target up to two Infernity Monsters in your graveyard and special summon them. You must have no cards in your hand to activate and resolve this effect. This is the special summoning I was talking about with your uh, Necromancer and Archfiend for that setup, and then with all your other different Infernity Monsters being able to use those cards on the field again for this card makes this card an incredibly powerful card and why we probably won't see it off the list for some time but still at least it's not banned we have the one to work with this deck all together for some of the other one ofs i run the one one for one this can be for your infernity mirage or your infernity avenger depending on which one you need to summon out onto the field the one foolish burial says enough setting up more monsters in the graveyard to use monster reborn now with this special summoning them back onto the field and just eating up your hand if you have this card as a resource to use or you can just set them on the field having no cards to go for those plays also and the one reinforcements of the army for the last of the one ofs but we still have a few more spells to go through i'm running two from the new set phantom rage charge into a dark world you target a level four lower fiend monster in your graveyard special summon it then discard one fiend monster you can activate one charge into a dark world once per turn but with this card you have more setup you have the special summon and the discard option setting up other infernities for you to use in your graveyard while special summoning more onto the field to use with the most important one obviously being your infernity archfiend for that play to be set up very easily with this card and then for the rest of the spells i run two infernity paranoia you tribute one dark monster to special summon one infernity monster from your deck or graveyard with the same level but a different name but negate its effects and during your main phase except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard you can banish this card from your graveyard to target one infernity monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand so resource recycling but also the fact that we have plenty of other dark monsters that can be summoned out to use the same name of other infernity monsters and the fact that we have some of the other level fours makes this a very useful card for the those summons and since we only run specific one ofs of those other cards that's why i like to run two of it so we always have the options depending on where the cards for the infernity monsters are either on the field or in the graveyard and that's it for the spells. Moving on to the traps, I run three Infernity Barrier. When your opponent activates a spell or trap or monster effect while well, you control a face-up attack position Infernity Monster and have no cards in your hand, negate the activation if you do destroy that card. A very strong counter trap in the deck and being able to rely on this card to stop a good number of our opponent's cards while we have no cards in our hand. We don't rely on hand traps in this deck. We want to have no cards to benefit from all the other different cards we run in the deck. So Infernity Barrier is definite three of for sure. Setting up the back row for those plays as well. And running two to infernity suppression if you have no cards in your hand you can activate this card uh, the turn it was set when your opponent activates a monster effect while well, you control an infernity monster negate the effect and then you inflict damage to your opponent equal to the activated monster's level times 100 so it just stops the effect but that extra burn damage can help for sure when going up against the opponent and they might just have a little life left but more of the fact that you can activate this card the turn you set it also so if you need to clear out your hand and just set these cards up you immediately have this card ready to activate as well and lastly, for the main deck, I run the one Infernity Break. Activate only if you have no cards in your hand. Select one Infernity card in your graveyard and remove it. Uh, you basically banish it. And select one card in your opponent's field and destroy it. So just a good resource. Like I said, I don't like banishing too, too much because we want to use those resources for our plays. So having the one Infernity Break just for those emergency situations where we just need to destroy a card and not so much, you know, negate it like we do with Infernity Barrier, we have the one option with this also. Being another Infernity card can be searched out with Archfiend also. And that is it for the main deck. We'll now move on to the extra deck running two of the new Infernity Doom Archfiend. Needing one tuner and one non-tuner makes it very generic for the deck. Once per turn, you can target one face of card on the field, negate its effects until the end of this turn. Then if you have no cards in your hand, you can destroy it. And while you have no cards in your hand, if this card bows an opponent's monster, any bow damage this card inflicts to your opponent is doubled. And a dark synchro monster that was summoned using this card's material can make up to two attacks on your opponent during each battle phase. So we have plenty of resources to go into with this card. I thought of Infernity doom dragon as well as a card to go into or a hundred eyes dragon i didn't have either of those synchros so if you wanted to add those into the deck for synchro options i'll show what uh, link monsters you can take out for those spots we do have the one void ogre dragon once per turn during the play's turn when your opponent activates a spell or trap card well you have no cards in your hand you can negate the activation and destroy it it basically was made for the infernity deck just that much more powerful of a card to use for sure for all of your different plays 
And I also run the one Trishula with all the different level threes, another easy one to summon out onto the field. For the Link monsters, I run one Nightmare Cerberus, one Nightmare Phoenix, and one Nightmare Unicorn. Now, all of these, you have to have no hand usually for your plays, but these can be great if you just have that one pesky card in your hand you need to discard to the graveyard, would have better setup in your graveyard as well. And also just having the uh, co-link for the extra dog can give you another resource to use on the field also. So they come in handy for their specific situations to use. I also have one Master King Archfiend. This would be one I would take out for either 100 Eyes Dragon or Infernity Doom Dragon up to the player which one they want to add with this spot same with we witch's apprentice both of these slots can be for your hundred eyes dragon and infernity doom dragon if you have those cards i also run one ip mascarena one cherubini ebon angel of the burning abyss one saryuja one apollosa bow of the goddess one borlo dragon and the one exceeds is the levy of the sea dragon because we do banish a good amount in this deck so even if we do banish the resources of you know necromancer and archfiend being able to use tour guide to summon out another monster overlaying the two and use levy to special summon that monster back on the field makes it a vital play for sure in the deck altogether. And as for the some of the uh, new combo plays you can do in the deck with Infernity, Conjurer, and Wildcat, these two cards alone can set up your play for your new Synchro Monster if you have no cards in your hand. Uh, the 800 attack point play for sure, but while you have no cards in your hand and this card's in your graveyard, you can special summon this card. So you can use Infernity, Wildcat. You can special summon this card from your hand by sending one other Infernity Monster in your hand to the graveyard. So sending Conjurer to special summon out your Infernity Wildcat, then being able to summon out your uh, Conjurer and special summon this card when you have no cards in your hand. So make sure you either have these Spell Traps to set up in the graveyard as well for those plays. And then having both of these cards, one being the Tuner and one non-Tuner, summoning out your Infernity Doom Archfiend. And then using this card for its power plays against your opponent and the extra benefit when you use it for a Synchro Summon of the double attack against your opponent also. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed the video. It's definitely one of the more crazier decks that I've, you know, built i'm very uh, wary when sometimes making some that just have so many different tech plays but that's what's great about the infernity deck all the decks differ depending on the play style of the person i just wanted to give my go at it for everyone to see but until next time please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and kira twig out